The Don's Fight Club wrapped up 2023 with two epic events. DFC2, headlined by a grudge match between Salvin SK Casitu and Jonathan One Take Carter, and DFC3, with none other than the skipper Big G featuring in the marquee bout. Join us as we recap the best of the action from DFC's first full calendar year. This is The Champ Show. The Don's Fight Club was built off the back of the success of the popular YouTube football team, S.E. Don's. So who better to headline the biggest DFC event so far than the man many recognize as the face of the movement and captain of the team, Big G. Hardest working team because we have to chaps, not by choice. Originally, when I spoke to Flips, I said, G, don't do it. G obviously said, you're crazy, my man. It, it, was, a, it was a weird one because G ain't been boxing. I, I felt as if he didn't need to put himself through what it takes to have a fight. There wasn't a Don on DFC, and the code has always been that there'll be a Don on each show. And I felt like it was my opportunity to step up and be counted. It was funny, the first part was like a duty of care. I was like, oh, you're going to get wrapped up, bro. <laughs> you know what I'm going to say? Like, for what it represents in who I am as the captain of the football club, if I go and put myself in the arena, there's no one better. And it again shows who we are as people. He felt as though he needed something to pursue and he needed a reason to lock in and fulfill his duty. G's hands were messed up from football. He, he was injured. I think he tore his groin at one point as well. We had a dodgy wrist. He, he didn't have any business going in there to fight. The biggest change in the whole main event was the fact that I was supposed to fight Benny Joseph. He got told last minute he's got a different opponent. Yeah, it was the night before. I didn't tell him until the day of. I remember saying to him, G, you got six minutes. It's a fight. You're fighting for six minutes. So survive that six minutes and you'll be fine. And he jumps in the ring. And that's when he finds out that his, his replacement opponent is a southpaw. And I could hear roars of, go and knock him out, go and do this. But I couldn't, I couldn't let it process. And then the lights hit, the green mist. I could hear people screaming at anything. I could hear people screaming at Big G. And I just got to the top of the stairs and I, held, I stood still for that moment and everything froze. Time to play the game. One thing I know G's gonna do is he's gonna fight. When boxing goes out the window, G will fight. G's somebody that in the face of, um, you know, adversity, hard work, but any challenge, he'll show up. G can look after himself and he's been through way more than a few punches in the face. And we're off. It's the main event. Oh! Big G's got some big shots. Good one two from Big G. He's so composed. He's focused. He's on the After three rounds, the skipper of SE Dons emerged victorious, taking home a unanimous decision on the judges' scorecards. But his exploits in the squared circle were a mere battle in a wider war. And beneath the tough exterior, was a man who had questions about his very self. I asked myself the question, are you a coward? Are you who you say you want to be? And on September 24th, 2023, those questions were well and truly answered for all the world to see. History is proof that the most iconic moments in combat sports are built off rivalries. And even at the somewhat recreational level, these grudges can make for some of the tensest of atmospheres. When two men simply can't stand each other, fate has a way of making them cross paths over and over and over again. Tensions high between them two um, from the build-up, and end of the day, it was personal. 
it was serious and the result mattered. At the end of the day, obviously it started from the call out, um, which was entertaining because it was surprising. SK. SK. A lot of effort went into that build up there. Um, like even when they did the face off, the little face off interview with D Gully at Crep Select, the amount of intensity in that place on that day was mad. If you know me, and even if you don't know me, even if you've just seen me, I like to have a laugh, I'm a happy guy, I like to smile. It was not that time. It was not that time, yeah. SK, one take, thank you for coming. <clears throat> Behind the camera, it was like a standoff between one takes man them and S's man them. When I tell you that the man them was in the house, the man them were in the house. It was like South versus East. I think everyone was just on edge waiting for someone to say the wrong thing or make the wrong action or something and then all of a sudden trainers will be flying everywhere. We'll see. You know what I fight as well? We'll see fighting that. Yeah, exactly. We'll see. We'll see. It's just words right now. I don't, I, 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 don't right now. I don't need so, to talk. I don't need to talk. We'll see. Talk's done. 100 percent it's been done. Yeah, yeah, we're fighting two weeks. We're fighting two weeks. Definitely. Yeah. I can't wait. I can't wait to. We'll yeah. see. Yeah. So we'll see what you really got. Mr. Undefeated. Five wins. Yeah. This and that. To the pleasant surprise of all involved, the face-off went smoothly without any disruption. However, controversy was lurking just around the corner. When it came to the, the build-up to the fight, I, I genuinely had a, I was quietly confident, and then it got doubled. One take misses weight. No one saw it coming. We're in the Dutch house, everything's going smoothly. One take turns up, he's got his entourage with him. It's not, it's not, it's, not, it's objective, it was never personal. SK's got to beat him. I'm, I'm with SK, it's, it's nothing personal. Do, do your way and SK's done his. One takes overweight, one nil SK. 77.9 kilos. For Jonathan, one take card. Next minute. The home gym say, you better lose that weight, kid. We've got a grown ass man skipping in, in bin lighters. Being weighed up beneath behind a towel. And I'm asking myself, what's going on here? Is this boxing? Is this what we're involved in? And the excitement grew and grew and grew because now there was controversy between between the two fighters. Who takes it more serious? You ain't made weight. Bad blood. The weight miss proved to be but a minor speed bump on the way to a much anticipated DFC2 main event. One take ended up making weight and all eyes were on the Beaverwood for the resolution of the feud. After four rounds of action, SK emerged as the victor with a landslide unanimous decision victory. SK basked in the glory while one take retreated to lick his wounds. But one thing about hustlers is they never die. One take moved up a weight class and seized the opportunity to stand toe to toe with the DFC light heavyweight champion and the number one ranked pound for pound fighter, Pat Hill. Pat was meant to fight someone called Che Garrett and he pulled out like three or four weeks beforehand. I'm still a little bit confused whether one takes delusional, whether he's super confident, because the guy just continues to question anyone who's seen as the top ranked. I saw one take spa and I was like, oh, you look a different man to the man that fought SK. And he was like, you want me to fight Pat, don't you? And I was like, oh, I don't want to force you into it, like. One thing I really respect about one take here yeah, is that he doesn't duck no punches. And he was like, no, I want it. He comes for the big fights. And I was down at TUA on a Saturday morning and one takes message me like, oh, 
is this fight happening or not? He hasn't come here on a, can I just get in there, give me an easy one, let me work my way up. He came, he came for SK. I was like, you know what, give me five minutes, I'll get the fight, mate. And then he came for Pat. He must be crazy. Greatest BFC fighter of all time. I predicted that Pat was gonna knock him out. And I was sad. I ain't gonna lie, I was sad. And now I've seen him walking into the changing room, effing and blinding. Pat, we know what he does. Pat don't take a day off. He he he, he goes hard at the gym. I've seen I've seen Pat training. What what's happened? Pat put Johnny Garton in a position where he had to make a decision. But one take here, yeah, I, I I knew what this guy was on. From what happened to SK, I said it. And he stepped up a weight. And I think that's a major, but I think he changed his camp as well from what, I, from what I saw in his corner. I said, listen, as a man, yeah, if you get beaten like that in front of that many people, never again. Good stoppage. Early stoppage. I say good stoppage, but run it back. On the night, I said that's got stopped too soon. On the night, I think he should have got a count. He had to make a decision. And whatever decision he made, either side wouldn't be happy with. I've seen Pat take shots. Let's just put it that way. He, he took a bigger lick in the last fight and he wobbled. I, I get that. The second you leave the decision up to the referee, you're in trouble. This ain't, that's, that's my, like, the man who I feel, he's Mr. Invincible, how? Pat, it was the man. He's the man. To be fair, you look at one takes journey as well. You've got to be happy for him, but Pat, Pat's going to want to get his lick back. Do you know one take, he talks, he talks. He backs his talk, man. And he's the DFC light heavyweight champion. There's nothing like a big fight that delivers. Welcome when all caution is thrown to the wind and everything is left right there in the ring. When what's understood doesn't need to be said. Forget boxing. We want to fight. Dean Yasmin versus Jay Smith. It, sh it, sh it showcased everything that DFC was about. It was, that was a boxing fight. These, these men went in, they trained the hard at their camps, and on the night, they showed up. Dean is a little bro, but at the same time, Jay is just bro. They came to sweep. Them boys there put on a show for That was a fantastic fight. The atmosphere in balling during that rock fight was crazy. You get like white colour fights, but these two came for a game plan and they sold tickets. They both stay composed and don't let the support and the crowd get to them. Because emotions could be running high on this one. If we were able to see which fights had the most punches from, they're definitely a candidate. Possibly the best technical fight I've seen across all DFCs. He's got something special, man. Jay Smith, warrior, tough as old boots. They're both assets to the project. Jay Smith emerged as the victor, cementing himself as the pound for pound best fighter on DFC. As for Dean Yasmin, he won the hearts of all in attendance with a valiant performance against seasoned opposition and solidified himself as the future of the fight club. But when recapping big fights on DFC in 2023, one can't forget the heavyweight slugfest we retreated to on DFC 2 between Tarek Osres and Lee Cook. That's two heavyweights going at it. That's one for the ages. I'd like to say that was a bull. I, w I was in awe of seeing two men who knew that the other one could get the other one out of the ring and saying, go on then, I fancy this fight. I don't think anyone predicted that this would go points, yet no one can say the thing would win. Wow, what 
a fight, basically. Men of that size can't be in, in, in a ring that small. The towel came in from the Lee Cook corner in the third round, and Tarek became the consensus baddest man in the fight club. The DFC heavyweight title has since been captured by viral sensation, Will All Night Long. The two gladiators will surely have differing opinions regarding who is the rightful custodian of the coveted title. The baddest man on the scene. Experiences like DFC are few and far between at the lower level of any sport. Put all the tangibles aside the number of knockouts, the titles on the line, the number of tickets sold. Take all those factors away, and what matters is what you can't measure. How each moment makes you feel. The emotions evoked. DFC is a, a product in one word. Levels. <laughs> I describe it as culture. Theater. Exciting. Fucking Entertainment. Exhilarating. 